We've got two big glimpses of Baldur's Gate 3 recently, and with that new gameplay and interviews detailing what's changed, I thought it was about time to round up 14 new things we now know about Baldur's Gate 3. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Larian Studios' title, Baldur's Gate 3 is a Dungeons & Dragons video game that has you playing some poor individual who has a tadpole wriggling around inside their head, thanks to these psionic tentacled creatures named Mind Flayers. That tadpole is going to turn you into a Mind Flayer in due course unless you can get it out, but until then, it does confer certain benefits. You'll get a taste of those benefits in this video, so let's get on with it. Here are 14 new things you need to know about Baldur's Gate 3. Previous demos of Baldur's Gate 3 had the narrator talking in past tense, making the game feel like you were acting out a story that had already been decided upon, and kind of made your actions feel less immediate. That's all changed now with the new narrative system, where the dialogue has been reworked to be in present tense. She is testing you somehow, about Raphael. Overall, it makes you feel like your choices are more attention worthy as the narrator appears to react to everything you're doing, crafting a story as you go about your business. It was definitely the right choice to rework the dialogue as we all want to feel like we're in control of the story, right? Larian have changed how the initiative tracker works in Baldur's Gate 3, making it much easier to tell who's going next in combat and enabling you to combine attacks of certain members of your party. Now, in the top left-hand corner of the screen, you can clearly see the initiative order of your characters and enemies, with all their portraits lined up. When two party members are next to each other, you can choose between them to decide who does their action first, letting you combo attacks or abilities with devastating results. Because if you were in battle with your buddies, you would want to combine your powers rather than worrying about who goes first, right? Unless you're one of those tough love kind of friends. We can now see exactly how saving throws work in Baldur's Gate 3 thanks to this poor elven character. For those who might not know, saving throws are initiated when you fall to zero hit points. You have to roll a d20 to try and survive, get over 10 and that counts as a successful saving throw, get below 10 and that's a failed saving throw. Get three fails first and you die, get three successes first and you live. Anyway, over their head appears that ominous skull counter and as you roll either well or badly, unless you're a bit sadomasochistic and like seeing characters on the brink of death, the counter fills up one of these two sides. Nifty, but don't forget to pray to the dice gods to make sure you roll well. Like I explained in the intro, you have a Mind Flayer tadpole in your head that will eventually turn you into the aforementioned Mind Flayer, unless you get rid of it stat. But although it does have that rather foreboding association, these tadpoles do come in handy every so often. As well as giving you the ability to tell when someone else has a tadpole in their brain, you can use its psionic abilities to manipulate NPCs into doing what you want, and most of the time it looks like that's leaving you the hell alone. You get given massive bonuses to wisdom with this ability, and the dice check so far has been relatively low, but there are caveats. Each time you let the tadpole do its stuff, you fall more to the dark side, aka the Mind Flayer side, with inevitable repercussions later down the line. Bad vibes ahoy. That tadpole in your brain not only lets you manipulate people, but you can also use its Wisdom Mind Flayer powers to read people's thoughts. Like before, you'll have to pass a dice check to see what they're thinking, and by the looks of it, it's harder if you're trying to delve into the mind of someone else who has a tadpole. You won't be told their exact thoughts either, but the narrator will hint as to what they're feeling, 
giving you a rough idea of what they're wondering in that very moment. Sneaking was always going to be a big part of Baldur's Gate 3, and now we have details on how it works. Upon entering sneak mode, you can preview which areas of your surrounding environment will obscure you best, thanks to the sun icon over your mouse. When it's full, there's nothing obscuring you, making you easier to spot. When it's half full, you are lightly obscured, and when it's empty, you are fully obscured, which would be the case in dark dungeons or underground. Sticking to the shadows is your best bet for getting at least half a sun, so bear that in mind when you're planning where to sneak. Hopefully, while in sneak mode, you can also see enemies' line of sight, making it less of a guessing game to try and figure out when it's safe to tiptoe around them and where exactly to direct your character. Stealing items in RPGs has been around for a while, so if you see an object highlighted in red in Baldur's Gate 3, it means that it's the property of someone else, and if you take it, you'll probably get in trouble. But did you know that it also extends to corpses? Yup, if you see a corpse highlighted in red, it means someone has already claimed dibs. I know corpses tend to be a free-for-all in most games, but you'll want to tread carefully when you stumble into the remnants of a fight when another group has already done the deed. Sneaking not only makes you harder to spot, but can get you some nice and convenient automatic crits on sleeping and drunk enemies. You can tell if they're incapacitated after one too many, or simply grabbing some shut-eye, by the purple bubbles around their bodies, but you'll need to be careful when approaching them. Like smashing a wall, will wake them up. But you don't need to worry about being obscured when approaching snoozing or tipsy enemies, as they're not cognizant enough to spot you stealthing towards them in bright sunlight. As you can control your party members separately and send each one on their own little scouting mission, sometimes you'll need to get them all back in one place when things start getting stabby. Or you might just want to get the party back together for some joint hijinks. Waypoints are found throughout the world of Baldur's Gate 3 and, once activated, can be used to teleport characters back and forth across the map independently of one another. For a game based on Dungeons & Dragons systems, this might not come as that much of a surprise, but you can surprise enemies. Get the jump on them by sneaking up behind them and then attacking without them seeing you, and they'll forego their first round, giving you an advantage at the beginning of the fight as you'll be able to get in an extra attack. The most recent Dungeons & Dragons adventure, Descent into Avernus, has been worked into the characters and locations you'll find in Baldur's Gate 3, as it serves as a prequel to the game. Avernus is the first layer of hell in the Dungeons & Dragons universe, and without giving anything away, falling into it becomes a very real threat for thousands of people across the land. Events in Descent into Avernus are referenced in Baldur's Gate 3, so, because of the fact that Avernus is suddenly a real and immediate danger, the already ostracised tieflings, with their demonic bloodlines, are looked upon with even more suspicion by certain NPCs. At one point in Baldur's Gate 3, you'll meet a group of refugee tieflings trying to get to Baldur's Gate, showing you just how desperate the situation has become. So, if you really can't wait for Baldur's Gate 3, Try out a descent into Avernus to get a firm footing in the game's world before it comes out. Reactions are worming their way into Baldur's Gate 3 too. Reactions are things you instantly do when certain criteria are met. So if you're in battle and an enemy moves out of melee range, you can decide in the UI to initiate an attack of opportunity without having to do anything during the fight yourself, as reactions are automatic. Reactions aren't just for combat though, as you can also use them for situational things like long drops. Equip Featherfall as your reaction and your float to the bottom of the hole safe and sound, without sacrificing your kneecaps. 
In an attempt to keep Baldur's Gate 3 accessible for non-D&D players, Larian Studios are doing their best to make reactions intuitive, and it should be implemented for early access. latest glimpses of Baldur's Gate 3 shows us inspiration at work too, which you'll earn throughout the game, and it lets you reroll dice. So if you get a particularly dire roll, you can use your inspiration to give it another go, just like in tabletop Dungeons & Dragons. Lastly, the big thing we found out about Baldur's Gate 3 is that Larian Studios are hoping that the game will go into early access in August. Maybe. With a release date that's going to be sometime in 2021, it's hopefully only a couple of months until we get hands-on with Baldur's Gate 3. And that's 14 new things we now know about Baldur's Gate 3. If you liked the video, why not chuck it a like and hit subscribe to see more videos about video games as well as much, much more. We come out with a new video every single day, so there's always something to watch. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go pour over Descent into Avernus to get prepped for Baldur's Gate 3. See you next time.